Hello YouTube. Uh, as promised, this is uh, my second, my first video, actually second video I've done. Um, this is going to be about the HVAC unit that I put on the uh, on the back of our RV. This is a mini split system. It's an air conditioner, a heater, a dehumidifier, and a whole house fan all in one unit. The good thing about these units are that they're so energy efficient. The uh, this thing uses less than 460 watts on high and once it reaches its set point those, that wattage goes down to about one-fourth of that okay. and so we're able to run this 24 hours a day seven days a week 365 days a year without ever having to plug into a campground and we just leave it on we don't need to bother with it we've always got uh, very comfortable temperatures inside and it's been just a change in the entire camping experience to be able to have that kind of a comfort level. I wanted to explain today how I installed this and, and a couple of, uh, uh, of the uh, technical specifications for this. Uh, this is a 24.4 SEER unit. Now what that means in layman's terms is that uh, it's about uh, the BTUs. This is an 11,000 BTU unit and it 24 uh, but it's got a the uh, the BTUs also has a uh, a turbo mode in, in it as well they go they can even go higher but 24.4 sear basically means that this unit will run 24.4 BTUs for one watt that that is that it, you know that is expended so that you know, if you were to calculate that out then the, this uh, 11,000 plus BTU unit you know at uh, 120 volts okay is going to end up less than 460 watts and I know that because I've also plugged th this unit into a kilowatt meter and the highest it would go and this was when the the inside ambient temperature was about 85 degrees and we, when we turn, first turned it on and 459 watts was the very highest wattage that it would show on the kilowatt meter okay. and so and that also um, correlates with the you know with the BTUs you know that is advertised with the SEER rating that's advertised and so this is exactly how it's supposed to operate now how, what, what, when I got this unit this unit comes pre-charged with Freon. So basically there's three parts to it. There is the outside unit, there's the inside unit that we'll show you later, and then there is the, the, uh, the copper lines connecting the two. The outside unit is pre-charged with Freon, and so you do not have to take it to a, a air conditioner uh, a service technician in order for them to charge this Freon. It's the Freon is already in it when you receive it, you know, uh, from Amazon. After you connect up the inside unit and mount it inside, and mount the outside unit, and you connect the copper lines and the control, the control uh, electrical cables, then all you have to do is you turn two valves on the inside of this part right here, and that pierces the copper line and then it allows the Freon that's in here to go throughout the system. And that's how it charged the entire system then, it, then is charged with Freon. Uh, but now what I did to mount this, there's lots of ways and lots of places you can mount this. On a trailer, you can mount it on the front, the tongue of the trailer. On a uh, motorhome, you could mount it on a hitch platform. You could mount it uh, on a on a travel trailer uh, on the or a fifth wheel on the on the bumper along with the class C like we have you know, I've mounted it to the bumper now so what I did basically is I went on Amazon and I and I bought two what's called bed extenders these are truck bed extenders and basically what these are is if you put one of these into the receiver hitch of a truck it allows you to carry 16 foot long boards because it sticks out and so if there's an L shape Okay, so what I did, I took these two L-shaped uh, uh, two by two beams, and I and I put two four-inch bumper uh, receiver hitches, you know, um, 
uh, and I'm, that I bolted directly to the uh, four inch bumper. Now I, I should have moved my ladder out of the way, but these are the, uh, the, uh, the, the two uh, square brackets and the receiver hitch is right back here and you can see the pin, the receiver pin right there. On the other side is the same thing. Okay, uh, it's even a, uh, you can even see it a little better. The receiver hitch is right here. This is where it bolts to the square bumper, and you can see then the uh, receiver pin right here that that connects this, and that way this is able to be uh, vertical to the wall. And then what I did is there's four mounting bolts. It's the only mounting bolts that has to that has to be mounted on this type of an air conditioner on the outside unit and they're carriage bolts and so the the these feet are already have square holes in them and that way you don't have to back these up all you got to do is just you have your hole through and you can just put the backup nut on tighten it up and these are very solid i've waited a year before i did any kind of video uh, or uh, any kind of recommendation on this unit. I wanted to make sure that this unit was exactly what the uh, nomadic, uh, uh, the nomad or the boondocker needed in order to uh, maintain a higher level of comfort. This, uh, an another reason why I chose a mini split is because the uh, mini split is a residential and a commercial grade air conditioner unit. What that means is uh, regular RV air conditioners, because of a uh, uh, because of the nature of the RV industry, an RV air conditioner has what they call um, uh, um, a lifespan. Okay, of how long this thing, this air conditioner is expected to last, and the uh, the business term for that is called pl uh, planned obsolescence. Basically, they know. On average, how many years an, an RV air conditioner will run before it becomes obsolete, before it becomes inoperable? Okay. Sometimes that it can run uh, fewer years than that. Sometimes it can run longer years. But the, but they plan for that air conditioner to become obsolete, you know, at that time. This is a uh, residential and a commercial grade air conditioner, which means that this thing is built to last 30 years. It, you know, the, there is no planned obsolescence, you know, on the, on the design or functionality of this air conditioner. Uh, these air conditioners, uh, Medea is the largest air conditioner manufacturer in the world. In every other country but the United States, all other countries use mini split systems and they've done so for over 40 years. So mini splits are very well known and, and, and the design has become uh, to the place where they can offer 30-year guarantees and warranties on these without having to worry about whether or not those warranties would, you know, would fail. So this is probably the best RV air conditioner you can buy. There's basically, uh, as far as vibration goes, only one moving part. You have the, you know, and, it's the and, it, and, it, and it's together is the air conditioner pump with an inverter motor in their one unit and, and and even those have rubber grommets and and vibration dampening built into the design to where any vibrations you have going down the road and things like that will not yeah, adversely affect this air conditioner okay so you know in all this runs on 120 volts but uh, and so but you only need a thousand watt uh, an inverter to run this. You can run it on less, but if you have other needs for 120 volts in your camper, that's why I say a thousand watts. You know, all you need is a, for output is is your is the wattage that this actually uh, uh, consumes, which is 459 watts on high, and then you add in whatever inefficiencies of the air of the inverter that you currently have, and so. It, normally, a 750 watt uh, inverter would easily run this. You know, we have a 3,000 watt inverter in ours. You know, simply because you know we plan to go on all electric on all of our devices. Um, uh, we're we're going to be putting in induction cooktop 
and uh, c c convection microwave half-time oven below it and take out the inefficient microwave that we have currently installed. That's one of my future upgrades. Um, how, and then anyways, after uh, as far as the installation, after I mounted this with these just four bolts, then I just put a, a shroud, a box made of UHMW around this because uh, the, the, the copper lines are 15 foot long and you cannot shorten them. They use the, the copper lines are used as a res reservoir for the extra freon. And so the, what I did was the excess copper lines, I coiled them up underneath this and then built a box around the coil of, of copper lines. Now we're going to take you to the inside and we'll show you the, uh, uh, the inside unit and I'll also show you the, the wattage that it puts out. Okay. It, Okay, we're on the inside. I do the uh, remainder of the video. Uh, I wanted to show you first uh, a couple of things about how to mount this. Uh, the inside unit comes with a plate that you can just screw to the wall. What we've done on this, because we didn't want to put any holes in our cabinet, we used two pieces of wood and just sandwiched it around the cabinet. And, that, and then we screwed the, plate, the mounting plate to those pieces of wood. And then all you have to do after you get the mounting plate uh, mounted, then you can just hang the inside unit on the mounting plate. And then that's the entire installation of the inside. Uh, after you've done that, you simply connect the, uh, the uh, um, copper lines. Uh, it has a drain line. You can see the white drain line going down. Okay, that way when you're in dehumidifier mode, it drains that water out of the of the RV that you know of any humidity that's inside okay now I'm going to go ahead and show you uh, about how much power this actually uses okay I believe this covers everything uh, you might need to know about installing a mini split system on your RV uh, one thing I do want uh, I do need to mention that it was might have been vague is uh, it, the most important thing is to select a mini split uh, system that has the highest sear value that, that you can afford. Uh, the higher the sear value, the more efficient it is, the less uh, battery power and the less solar panels that you need to run it. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please leave them in the comments. I'll try to answer every, every question. The possibility is if there are several uh, comments on the same question, I may just uh, answer them all in one uh, detailed uh, uh, answer. So please uh, don't think I'm you'll be you're being ignored. Uh, look through all the comments to see if your question has already been asked by someone else and then I've already answered it. Um, one thing that uh, Randy did not or was uh, not, I wasn't able to mention in Randy's video is uh, about the question of money. Every design I've done is entirely free. Um, uh, in, in fact, uh, those uh, um, inventions that are uh, that apply, I've already uh, and will apply for provisional patents for them. So nobody else can take these and take advantage financially of people who need these things the most. This is entirely free. I, my whole purpose is to bring a level of comfort to the RV community that, it, that equals you know, that that you can find in your own in an apartment or whether you're plugged into an RV park. So the, the hope is to, that you will be able to resolve your heating air conditioning issues, your water issues, uh, your tank issues and all of those things if not completely solved at least uh, be made much more uh, efficient so that uh, they're much yeah, better managed. Um, uh, again I will be providing some of these inventions uh, and, and upgrades will have uh, um, instruction, in, um, schematics, drawings, you know others like today 
it was pretty pretty straightforward four mounting bolts and connecting two copper wires in fact it took me after i had the uh the mount uh mounted to my bumper it the rest of the job took me less than 30 minutes so uh you know this is a a project that uh just a, a few wrenches and you're good to go also the whatever mini split you uh choose the, the uh, instructions and the tools that you'll need and everything would be included in the installation videos. The only difference is you're mounting it to, the, to an RV instead of mounting it to the wall or mounting it to the ground. Uh, everything else is in, you know, in, you know, essentially the same. Um, there was a few other things that uh, uh, due to time constraints I wasn't able to mention in Randy's video. I'm working now on an insert that can turn an RV toilet into a, uh, a liquid diverting toilet and back and forth again so you can you know, go into an RV park remove the insert and your your standard RV toilet will function just like it did when it was new and when you go back out into the into the boonies again put the insert back in and now it's a liquid diverting toilet again and so to be able to extend uh, the life of your tanks and and such. There's plenty of other uh, uh, upgrades that I've done. Some of them much more important than others. I'm trying to deal with some of the more important ones first. Um, not all of them, not because some of these are still being done. Uh, I'm still in the, in the uh, uh, completion stages on several projects at once. So please be patient. Uh, this is my first video that I've ever uploaded on YouTube. I hope it actually works um, and I thank you very much for your very kind comments in Randy's video. I believe you guys are awesome and I hope that you all have great travels. Thank you again and have a great day. Goodbye. Okay newbie video editor back again. I Evidently I've uh, recorded the um, kilowatt uh, portion of the video in the wrong orientation. It ended up in portrait mode instead of landscape mode. So uh, I will get back to the that at a, a later time and give you, you know, uh, give you a video of the kilowatt hours uh, at that point. Uh, all right. Once again, thank you for watching. Uh, like and subscribe if you so inclined. Okay. Goodbye.